Welcome to Pandora Astrology's monthly horoscope for June of 2023. We are the astrologers of Pandora Astrology. I'm Jamie Kale Miller. I'm in Berkeley, California. And I'm Julia Mijas, and I'm in San Francisco, California. Let's take a look at what's happening in June. Well, Aries, I'm going to start out this horoscope with Pluto, which doesn't happen very often, but sometimes it's necessary. Here's the little planet. He's hanging out in your 11th house, and he's been here not very long, really just about a month or so. And he's just sort of teasing his uh, sign change, which is to say he's been traveling along through Capricorn, your 10th house, for more than a decade, since 2008, transforming your career. And this year, he's moved on for just a little while into your 11th house and proposes to transform your social life. Um, and uh, But this month, since he's already been there for a month or two, on the 11th, he's going to back up into your 10th house and be there through the end of the year. But moving on into your 11th house uh, next year, 2024, um, for real. So, but let me give you the scoop here because that was a lot of technical stuff. So uh, in the first few days of the month, Pluto in your 11th house is beginning a long-term process of transforming your social life. This can, over the coming more than a decade, uh, bring some pretty intense interactions with friends. You might feel possessive of your friends. You might feel like you're just ready to end it with a friend, like uh, like it's just not a tenable friendship. Uh, you might find that a friend does that with you, and you might really want to make it a very clean break. Um, that can happen. It's important to be gracious and graceful about it as much as you possibly can, but it is important to remove toxic friendships from your life. And so Pluto will be doing that process, but in a long-term, slow-moving kind of way over about the next decade. And anything that you might have experienced in the way of that uh, this month or last month is really just a hint of the deeper transformations that are yet to come. So when Pluto steps back into the 10th house, where he's going to be for the rest of the year, um, then he's going to be finishing up and polishing off any transformations that he's put you through in the realm of your career. So this could affect your reputation. It could affect your job, your place of business. It could affect how your job reflects your, uh, like the long arc of your career, because the job and the career aren't the same thing, are they? Jobs are like beads that happen along a string, which is your career and the string holds them all together. And if in the last decade you found yourself in a job or moving in a direction that doesn't feel like it really matches your career path, well then there may have been some big dramas that happened and some big changes that happened and uh, hopefully you didn't burn too many bridges and that you came away with some good recommendation letters um, to help you on the actual career path going forward. I want to talk now about Saturn, which has entered your 12th house and the sign of Pisces. And uh, Saturn in Pisces is quite a thing. Um, and it, it may seem a little strange. How could Saturn even be in Pisces? Like, what would that mean? Because Saturn is so much about organization and structure. It's all about discipline, rather controlling, certainly, and judgmental. But Pisces is very compassionate. It's much more loosey-goosey. It's more empathetic and relaxed and, and kind of chaotic, really. So Saturn in Pisces really has to do with taking responsibility for your deep moral structure. It has to do with taking responsibility for the, the spiritual value system that underpins your whole entire life. And I do have to tell you that um, 
if Saturn is in your 12th house, and, it, and it's usually there for about two and a half years, this can often signal a career fallow period. Now, fallow is a farming term. It refers to letting the, tr the fields rest in the winter under their blanket of snow. You don't expect to be harvesting in the winter. You can't even plant. You can't even break ground or plow. Like You can't do anything. And so uh, Saturn representing career being in this 12th house um, often signals that whatever state your career is in before Saturn moves into this house, you should probably prepare to just coast for two, two and a half years and not expect any progress that is visible to people other than yourself. You can make progress on the inside in a more hidden kind of a way, internal kind of a way, but you won't really see results until Saturn bursts out of the second 12th house and enters your first house. And that'll be a couple of years from now. Um, <clears throat> okay, so Juno starts the month in Gemini and here she is traveling along through your third house. Now, Juno is an asteroid goddess to do with partnership and collaboration. So wherever she goes, she brings that spirit with her. And it's really good to collaborate and be a partner to a partner when, um, when Juno is, you know, traveling in, through particular houses. The third house is a very social house because it has to do with communication. <laughs> and so if while Juno moves through this house, you've been looking at and working on communication with your partner, well, that is a really, really excellent use of this transit. Recognizing that when you communicate with another person, you are partnering with them uh, in the process of making yourself understood and understanding the other person. And so um, looking at that very consciously is a really great use of Juno passing through this house, especially if things have kind of fallen apart in the communication department recently. Um, so a wonderful thing is coming just a little bit later in the month, which is that Juno, which is moving fast and forward, direct as we call it, conjuncts the sun for a lovely day that we call Commitment Rapture Day. And we call this Commitment Rapture Day because it's very, very different from the other part or the other end of Juno's cycle when Juno and the sun oppose each other. That is usually occurs, well, it always occurs in the middle of a difficult Juno retrograde period where um, you may need to solve some kind of a problem in your committed relationship. But this day, this commitment rapture day, is a wonderful day for things to go forward at speed and with clarity relative to a committed relationship. So if right around here is like around June 20th or really most any time this month, um, you, for example, sign those incorporation papers with your business partner or, um, you know, sign that marriage certificate, you, um, you know, you get engaged. Any of those things are benefited while Juno and the sun are close together like this. So good stuff there. Now, a couple of days after that, Juno moves on into Cancer right here in your fourth house, bringing her partnership sensibility into your domestic region, which does suggest this is a really good time. And Juno will be here for about two months in Toto. Um, this is a really good time to uh, work together with your partner on your domestic scene, to get together with your partner and say, hey, is it time we rearrange the living room and get that, you know, stereo that you wanted? Or um, is it time, you know, do we need to sit down and talk about uh, how we're going to raise our kids from this point onward? Is somebody hitting some age milestone that we need to pay attention to? Um, you know, so aspects of your domestic life um, are a really good thing to hash out with your partner while Gino is passing through this house. Uh, then the last thing I want to tell you about right now is Ceres, and she starts the month in Virgo in your sixth house. Ceres has to do with good stewardship, taking good care of your physical existence, which means 
making sure that you're eating right, that you're doing the healthy habits that will keep your body together for uh, for longevity, and um, and also managing your money in a good way. Now, Ceres is still at the beginning of the month, still recovering from her retrograde period that she went through from the beginning of February to the beginning of May. And, um, and that started in your seventh house, which might have been attended by some upsets or problems with a partner around finances. And uh, so uh, back in February, we declared the beginning of a financial rebalancing period. And then Ceres retrograded back into your sixth house uh, during the months in between, like um, uh, April, March and April. And, um, <clears throat> and when Ceres landed in your sixth house, it's been all about getting reorganized and discovering the holes in the ship and patching them. So uh, tightening up the ship, noticing the details, making sure that the spreadsheets spreadsheets are all doing their formulas properly and that you're saving the receipts that you need to save and just basically getting your finances into a better state of organization or getting your health habits into a better state of organization, maybe as regards nutrition. So as Ceres finishes out the sixth house and on the 21st, moves on into the seventh house, um, I would say that you're really starting to recover from that series retrograde period and you've got a plan and you can move forward with that. And uh, on the 21st is uh, series moving into the seventh where she's going to be for about two months is a really great time for coming back to the conversation with your partner about like, well, now that I've figured out my, you know, how to organize my money, how, uh, how can we proceed forward as a team building wealth together? Another, uh, another approach might be, well, now that I've sorted out my diet and figured out what was that problem that was leading to those tests coming back with the wonky results, and now that I've figured out how I need to be eating and what I need to be doing for my body, let's be a team together in, uh, in our health going forward. And so you could very well spend the rest of June and through July, having those kind of conversations with your partner to your mutual benefit. Hey, Julia, what's up with Mercury, Venus, and Mars for Aries this month? Well, Aries, Mercury is moving so fast through the sky right now. It's going to go through three different houses of yours, starting with your second house of finance. And when Mercury is in the second, it really means that you're preoccupied with security in your life, financial security, any other structural systems that give you that strong foundation in life. Um, with Mercury in the second for the first 11 days of the month, you'll be thinking about how you can sort of increase your money in some way. You might also be thinking of buying and selling some of your personal possessions too, because that's also what the second house rules. Then by June 11th, Mercury goes into the third house where it's going to be until the 26th. And during this transit, you might find that you are connecting a lot more with your siblings, your cousins, your neighbors, because Mercury is all about connection. That's why it rules communication. This could also be a transit where you notice that you're taking more weekend trips, getting out of the house more, just sort of walking and moving around your neighborhood, either with your car or public transit or your bike or just, just walking too. Then by June 26, Mercury enters your fourth house where it's going to be for the rest of the month. This house rules your past as well as your family. So this may be a time of reaching out a lot more to family members, connecting with them more, thinking about your domestic situation, making plans around your home. Do you want to move? Do you want to buy a home? Do you want to sell a home? Uh, where do you want to rent next? And uh, your mind could also be preoccupied with past matters as well. Then by June 30th, Mercury directly conjoins the sun in this house. We call it Greater Epiphany Day because it's direct versus retrograde when we call that lesser epiphany day but in either event um when mercury conjoins the sun it's a time of insight and revelation and in the fourth house these revelations could have to do with something either deep from your past something pertaining to your domestic situation or even something about your family 
Now, Venus is also going to start the month in the fourth house, but she's only there for the first five days where you're really going to just be enjoying your family and home a lot. You might not be inclined to be getting out of the house much because you're just so happy just to be in your castle. Um, by the fifth, Venus is going to move into your fifth house, and this is a very fun transit. So even if you're a bit of a homebody at the beginning of the month, by the fifth, you're going to want to get out there and have some fun. This house rules bars, clubs, festivals festivals, uh, places of amusement, theaters, uh, casinos, uh, you might find yourself having a lot more fun and pleasure in these types of places. This is also a house of dating. So if you're in a relationship, it could really bring out sort of the inner child of you and your partner together where you guys get a lot more playful. And if you're not in a relationship, great time to start dating. And then finally, Mars is going to be in the fifth all month. This again is the house of pleasure and fun. It's also the house of children. So if you do have any children, you might not be seeing eye to eye with them. They might be annoying you. You might be arguing and disagreeing more because Mars can have a little bit of conflict. Um, but Mars in the fifth house can be great if you can get some work done with your kids. You know, if they have some summer work to catch up on, if you guys could get, maybe go out hiking together or do something very active together, that could really help this transit out a lot. And it's a time where you're just going to want to play games, have fun, uh, you know, which is all well and good. But Mars in the fifth house, since it's, there's so much fifth house energy for you this month, it's going to make having to deal with responsibilities a lot more dreary which can be sometimes kind of a drag yep afraid so hey jamie here did you know we run live workshops monthly where you can get questions answered about your own chart join us for a live customized reading of your personal chart this month's topics are success and your saturn return transiting nodes and your destiny and harvesting opportunities during your Jupiter luck year. And these workshops are available exclusively for our beloved Patreon subscribers. You get the Nodes and Destiny workshop with your Tier 2 subscription, and you get all three workshops with your Tier 3 subscription. It's easy to sign up at the Patreon link in the description below. Now let's get back to the video. But I have more news about that kind of uh, energy and drive in the form of a full moon right here on June 3rd. And that's a full moon here in Sagittarius in your ninth house, playing tug of war with the sun in Gemini here in your third house. And so you might feel the push me pull you of the moon in Sagittarius's desire for adventure, to hit the open road, to expand and grow, to be that big personality, to be playful. And uh, versus the sun in Gemini is really more like nerdy, retiring, introverted, you know, being in the head ways of being. <clears throat> so because Gemini is expressly not so adventuresome and Sagittarius is like mm, not so prone to think things through before acting. So they do balance each other really well. And uh, we're calling this moon nerdy adventures for that reason. Um, there's lots of incentive during this moon to balance these two. Chiron trines the moon and sextiles the sun. Mars and Pallas Athena also trine the moon and sextile the sun. So um, there's really lots of help. And uh, this moon is really, I think it's kind of fun. Uh, the idea of the classic, you know, nerd versus jock dilemma uh, came into our conversation about it. You can find out more about this moon on our website, pandoraastrology.com in the forecast tab, where you'll find the video. Um, and that may help to give you some clues about what you'd like to do with this moon. But having some form of, you know, well thought out adventure would certainly be the order of the day. Now, the second moon I want to tell you about is June 17th, new moon in Gemini which we're calling New Ideas Dream Tested. And the reason why we're calling it New Ideas is because when the sun and the moon get together, it's a time of rebirth. It's a time of burgeoning. It's a time of planting seeds, which aren't necessarily going to be harvested right away or even soon, but which will get to develop and, um, and burst forth into something eventually. 
So when that happens in Gemini, the new moon falling in Gemini is generally the birth of an idea or ideas. And uh, this is a wonderfully stimulating new moon landing as it does in your third house of ideas. And so lots of congruence there. <clears throat> and the reason why we're saying dream tested is twofold. There's a square to Neptune, which is the dreamer, and she's traveling along in her own sign of Pisces. So Neptune is demanding that you dream up these ideas, that you don't just have them in a purely cerebral, dry, cool kind of way, but that you really kind of feel into them and imagine what might be the results of them. So Neptune is saying, dream these ideas, don't just think them. And then we have over here Ceres in Virgo, an earthy planet in an earthy sign, also square that sun and moon in Gemini. And so this is the testing part uh, because Ceres is bringing in a very practical approach to those ideas, reality testing them to make sure that they are in fact viable. And so Ceres and Neptune oppose each other, Neptune pulling you into the realm of dreams, and series pulling you into the realm of the practical, and together they can balance those new ideas and test them so that they can be strong. And then the last thing I want to tell you about is the seasonal change. The sun spends most of June traveling along through your third house of ideas and thoughts and communication, bringing lots of emphasis to that area, and you can see how full and busy this house is early in the month. Um, and so lots of emphasis on how you communicate and who you communicate with and how you uh, birth ideas and um, express your voice. And, uh, and then as the month moves on, the sun will leave your third house and enter your fourth house on June 21st, beginning to bring energy to the domain of home and family, domestic life, heritage, and roots. Wherever the sun goes, we want to shine the light of our high quality attention. Attention is like sunlight. It's nourishing. It helps things to thrive and grow wherever you shed it. And because this is the house of home and family, this is a really good month for paying attention to your family members and your home itself and uh, asking yourself, you know, what would what would I like to do next with my home and in my home? And um, how's it going in my family? And is there anything that I've not been looking at for a while that I need to shine the light of consciousness on? Is there any good behavior and good experiences going on in my home that I want to grow just by paying attention to them? So uh, paying attention is really the best use of a sun transit. The sun enters your fourth house on June 21st. We'll be traveling through this house for about 30 days, and it's just such a wonderful time for home and family. Well, that's all we have for you today. If you love Pandora Astrology's free and informative horoscopes, then please do hit that like button, subscribe to our channel, and share our horoscopes with your friends. You can find out so much more about how this month's transits affect you in very personal timing in our monthly transits workshop for tier two patrons on Patreon. And it's practically free at $15 a month. Find the link in the description below to sign up. Enjoy this beautiful springtime. And until next time, we'll see you around the cosmos. Bye-bye.